Thanks to Dashlane for supporting this video. The whole idea of solid state battery changing our future started a decade ago. All we knew at the time was that lithium ion batteries has changed our lives powering smartphones. It will continue to do so powering smartphones with a smaller form factor and its other application with great potential will emerge one of which is electric vehicles. The central argument is that solid state batteries are the ultimate form of lithium batteries, safer, more durable, and with higher energy density, and therefore it must be the future. Of course, at the time, solid state batteries have not yet taken a center stage since traditional ones still have much room for improvement, but after a decade of development and research, the question has emerged, whether solid state batteries can finally take a major role in our future. Two industries have propelled battery technology to the center stage of our lives, smartphones and electric cars. During the 20th century, we have gone from nickel ion batteries to alkaline batteries, to nickel metal hydro batteries, and finally to lithium ion batteries. It was not until the first smartphone did lithium ion batteries become so important to us, and it was not until mass production did lithium ion batteries become economically viable for electric cars. I'm of course talking about the Gigafactory of Tesla. This is the part of the video for me to give you a brief idea of what makes up the chemistry of traditional and solid state lithium ion batteries. Most batteries are made up of three components, cathode, anode, and electrolyte. When a battery is being used, electrons go from anode to cathode through the circuit, powering your brand new Tesla. The reverse happens when the battery is being charged. The difference between the two is that lithium ion batteries have liquid electrolyte, whereas solid state batteries have solid electrolyte. That's it, simple and straightforward. The complex part is the diverse range of materials used for these three components and the characteristics of these materials. Solid electrolyte is one type of material available and it is advantageous in many ways. First, it makes solid state batteries safer. This is easy to understand as solid state batteries does not need metal casing to contain liquid electrolyte. On top of that, solid state batteries also have better energy density, which means your 300 mile range Tesla could run as far as 700 miles with a solid state battery. Your smartphone can sustain for days without charging and you never have to worry about a depleted cell again. For Tesla, it uses two types of batteries for its two branches of businesses. NCA batteries for its car business and NMC battery for its solar business. Both are normal lithium ion batteries. The former has a higher energy density and it, it also has a smaller form factor and the latter is cheaper. But the idea is that Tesla might change the solid state when the technology matures. For solid state batteries, many battery chemistry are in trial and we do not yet know which one will emerge the winner by the middle of the next decade. For example, the famous scientist John B. Goodenough has published a paper in 2016 explaining why lithium glass battery could be the future with higher energy density and longer life cycle. This battery has a glass electrolyte, hence the name. Many other materials are proposed to use as solid electrolytes in solid state batteries, including ceramics and sulfides. A few cathode materials are also experimented, including lithium sulfur and lithium air. Lithium sulfur is 10 times larger than effective value of lithium cobalt oxide. Sulfur is enabled to be used as a cathode in lithium electrolyte applications because it is soluble in most liquid electrolytes, causing a dramatic decrease in the lifetime of a battery. This is why sulfur is currently being heavily studied in solid state applications. Lithium air is also considered because of the high theoretical capacity. So what is the result of putting all these technologies together? Changing the future of energy storage? Not so fast. In addition to a long development cycle and many more technical challenges, here are the generally agreed benefits of solid state batteries. Researchers found that lithium sulfur batteries can potentially improve energy density tenfold from 300 watt hour per kg to 2,600 watt hour per kg. And if we combine lithium sulfur with glass electrolyte to make all solid state lithium sulfur batteries, safety and longer charging cycle could be possible. Let's think about this for a second. If the energy density of our smartphone battery and car battery could be improved fivefold, iPhones will be usable for five days before recharge and Tesla will be usable for 1,500 miles before recharge. This will be a strong enabler in both industry, hence changing our future, or at least the future of on-road transportation and our social life. 
However, in a review article published in 2019, which summarizes the reality of all solid state batteries, it pointed out rightfully that practical application is hampered by the high resistance arising at the solid to solid electrode electrolyte interface, which basically means that changing electrolyte from liquid to solid is a challenging task. And we have not yet overcome some very fundamental technical difficulties. Note that this review was published in 2019. We're still far from commercializing the technology if fundamental technical challenges still exist. I'll link the paper down below for your reference. So here's what I think. I'm sure Panasonic and Tesla's Chinese battery partners have already started working on this technology, but if we look at how long it usually takes for technology to mature, patience is called for. As this paper pointed out, it generally takes five to seven decades for a particular technology to go from research paper to large scale commercialization. That's why John Goodenough was awarded a Nobel Prize at the age of 97. He worked on the technology 40 years ago in the 70s. I know all of us want this to happen as soon as possible because the benefit is substantial, but only time is our best friend here. Now, I want to thank Dashlane for supporting this episode. It's been a reliable password management tool for me for over a year, but it's so much more than just password management. I'm more than happy to recommend Dashlane services to all of you. Before I started working on this channel, I used to work as a venture capitalist helping investment specifically into cybersecurity companies. What I realized vividly then is the fact that the weakest link of cybersecurity is people, our inability to recognize security threats. You'd be surprised at how important it is to have a trusted company such as Dashlane to take care of your online identity. With Dashlane's patented encryption storage system, not only can you update and manage your passwords easily from all your devices, you can be sure that when a data breach happens that threatens the safety of your online identity, Dashlane will keep you informed so you can rectify the situation right away. Additionally, Dashlane provides a VPN service that hides your online identity when using public or untrusted Wi-Fi networks, an extremely useful feature that I like. Click on the link down below for a free trial of Dashlane Premium for 30 days. And if you like it, Dashlane offered audiences a special 10% discount of Dashlane Premium with the code CuriousElephant. Definitely try it out today. All right, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.